Welcome back. In the last video, we derived the two fundamental equations of the Schrodinger equation. That is, the De Broglie equation of wave particle duality and the Planck equation of energy quantization, E equal HF. We saw that these are the same equations for planets in the cosmos, with the major difference of replacing H with G, according to the equivalence principle that we established in the previous videos. So, these equations for celestial objects were therefore lambda equal to g over p and e equal to gf. Today, we will be looking at how Schrodinger used these equations and the idea of waves to derive the so-called matter wave equation. First, we will derive the Schrodinger equation for atomic particles using the generally accepted technique. Then, we shall follow the same approach and arguments to derive the Schrodinger equation for cosmic particles. In the subsequent video, we will solve these equations and by the solutions, we will be able to see clearly how everything you know about quantum mechanics Specifically, its view on how nature works is wrong. I would like to make it clear that all the quantum mechanical equations are correct, but there is one little thing in the equations which is the source of all the problems of interpreted quantum mechanics. It is the sole reason why quantum mechanical descriptions do not fit reality, and I can say do not describe reality. I will show you what that is and provide a solution which will be able to maintain the math and at the same time provide unequivocal interpretations. This work will also reveal that all these quantum mechanical equations are the same equations describing all cosmic objects like planets, stars, asteroids, etc. To ensure that you don't miss a step which might be crucial to understanding the subsequent video, please subscribe. And also to keep this channel going, please click the like button and share the video. Erwin Schrodinger was asked by Peter Debye to give a talk on the De Broglie hypothesis in the physics colloquium in Zurich, which De Broglie had recently published. At the end of his talk, Peter Debye, being unconvinced, raised the question, how can there be a matter wave without a wave equation? Schrodinger saw this as a valid problem and he sought out to find a wave equation for matter waves. The simple idea of a wave is that its wave function must contain an oscillatory term, either cosine or sine, just like the common progressive wave equation y equal to y0 sine kx minus omega t, which is a solution to the following wave equation. To check that this wave function is indeed a solution to the wave equation, let's sub it into the wave equation. The first derivative of y with respect to x is as shown. Differentiating again yields this, which is just minus k squared times the wave function y. The first and second derivatives of y with respect to time are given as follows, which simplifies to minus omega squared y. Putting these into the wave equation yields this. Simplifying a bit yields this. By taking the square root of both sides of the equation yields this. But we know that omega is equal to 2 pi times frequency and that k, the wave number, is equal to 2 pi over the wavelength. Subbing this in the velocity expression yields v equal to lambda f, the normal wave velocity relation. Since we are able to recover the velocity relation, then the wave function y indeed is a solution to the wave equation. This is the same approach that Schrodinger used. First of all, 
he chose his wave function psi as follows. In terms of sine and cosine, this can also be written as follows. I is a complex number and is equal to the square root of minus 1. He then applied this wave function to both sides of the following classical energy equation to have this. It is rather more convenient to express the kinetic energy in terms of momentum. Kinetic energy is half mv squared and linear momentum is mass times velocity. If we square the momentum, we have v squared equal to m squared v squared. If we divide this by 2m, we get half mv squared, which is the kinetic energy. So we can write kinetic energy equal to momentum squared over 2m. At this point, he invoked the De Broglie equation p equal h on lambda. According to the wave theory, wavelength is equal to 2 pi on k. So, subbing lambda into the momentum equation gives p equal to h bar times k, where h bar is the reduced Planck's constant and is equal to the Planck's constant over 2 pi. So, p squared becomes h bar squared k squared, and therefore, the kinetic energy becomes h bar square k squared over 2m. In the last video, we also derived the Planck-Einstein equation E equal hf. There is a relation between frequency and angular velocity which is as follows. So frequency is equal to omega over 2 pi. Subbing this in the Planck-Einstein equation yields energy equal to h bar omega. We shall now replace the kinetic energy term and the total energy term in the energy equation as follows. We can play around with the wave function a bit to get some interesting expressions. The derivative of psi with respect to time equals to minus i omega times the exponential function. But the exponential function is just psi. So the psi dt is equal to minus i omega psi. Multiplying both sides of the equation by the complex number i yields omega psi equal to i the psi dt. Let's keep this aside for a moment. If we now differentiate psi with respect to x, we get i k times the exponential function. But I look at my energy equation and see k, not k squared. I can get k squared if I differentiate again with respect to x. So the second derivative with respect to x is equal to minus k squared psi. Multiplying both sides of the equation by minus 1 yields k squared psi equal to minus the square psi dx squared. So now let's take these two results and put them in the energy equation. So the energy equation becomes this. And this is the Schrodinger equation, or as others may call it, the time-independent Schrodinger equation. The sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy generally represents what is known as the Hamiltonian, capital H. So the term on the right of the Schrodinger equation is just the Hamiltonian. So we can define an operator called the Hamiltonian operator H kappa like so, which is just the total energy without the wave function. So the Schrodinger equation can be written as this. When a Hamiltonian operator acts on a wave function, it produces an eigenvalue which happens to be the energy of the particle. So, more compactly, the Schrodinger equation can be written as this. Okay, now let us extend this to celestial particles. Just a reminder, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you have, click on the bell icon so that you will get notified each time I post updates. 
The momentum equation in this case is given as follows. We have established that the movement of planets is wave-like, and therefore, we can also assign a wave number k to it. So we can write lambda equal to 2 pi on k. Also, as we saw for the case of the electron, momentum can therefore be written as b equal to g bar k, where g bar is equal to g on 2 pi, and this is analogous to h bar. Similarly, the energy equation is given us gh, and since f is equal to omega on 2 pi, we have energy equal to g bar omega. By using an identical wave function psi, then the derivatives remain the same as we saw earlier. Therefore, we can write the Schrodinger equation for cosmic particles as this. It is exactly the same equation as with that of atomic particles, with h just replaced with g. When we solve this equation, will it also give us results that will force us to interpret solar systems like we interpret atoms, or will it give solutions that are consistent with observable reality? Let's find out in the next video. So subscribe and turn on the notification to get notified when the video is uploaded. Thank you and I hope I see you next time.